One of the most compelling things about The Old Republic is, and arguably, the setting. Nauseating prequels aside, people still love the Star Wars universe and want to be part of that world. That's one of the things that the game offers straight out of the box, a chance to feel like a classic Star Wars character. Each class, with the exception of the Imperial Agent, which is basically James Bond in space, represents an archetype from the films. He can be a wise-cracking smuggler with a wicked companion, a noble Jedi learning the ways of the Force, a merciless bounty hunter stalking criminals across the galaxy, or an evil Sith Lord. Bad news always brightens my mood. The Adversar Hegemony is a minor galactic power based on xenophobic expansionism. The other draw is the fusion of typical MMO gameplay and single-player elements. At its core, The Old Republic is like any other online roleplayer, but the addition of story elements, interactive dialogue, branching paths, gives it some extra weight. Each planet has its own problems and internal conflicts, and you find yourself in the middle of it all, either representing the Republic or the Empire. As a Sith, for example, you could be helping the local Imperial Army quell a slave riot or stop an uprising. Admittedly, not all of the dialogue and story is top quality. Alderaan is especially tedious, recalling the dull space politics of the dreaded prequels, but it eclipses anything else in the genre. The interface, controls and combat are all pure World of Warcraft. This means that straight from launch the game is incredibly competent as an MMO, borrowing elements that Blizzard have refined over the years. But it also means that the game has something of an identity crisis. So long as our own strength is true. On one hand, it carves its own niche by bringing the solo aspects of games like Dragon Age and Mass Effect to the table. But on the other hand, you can't help but shake the feeling that it's wow with a sci-fi skin. It's exciting to think about what the game will be like in a few years, if, of course, it survives that long, you never really know with MMOs. Compare World of Warcraft's early days to the post-Cataclysm era and you can see just how much a game like this can evolve over time. Don't expect a quest system that completely rewrites the MMO rulebook, still essentially killing and collecting, but the story really does bring it to life. Quests often have unexpected outcomes and the class-specific missions offer a constant running story that's genuinely compelling. It also means that you can comfortably play the game solo without being numbed by boredom. So, should you try The Old Republic? We'd have to say yes, if only for a month. It's a game worth experiencing, not only as an MMO, but as the spiritual successor to the Knights of the Old Republic series. If you want a quality, story-led RPG set in the Star Wars universe, this offers that, but with the bonus of a persistent world full of real players. Neither the Republic nor the Jedi are prepared for another war. We would lose. Billions would die. Ah! 